Alan, what have you got there? This, Tell me a little bit about it, will you? This is what is known as the Thatcher Music Box. It came into my possession uh, several years ago upon the death of my father. And this has a inscription on the lid. It was given to my great, great grandmother by my great, great grandfather. And the inscription reads as follows. From Moses to Letty, September the 12th, 1877. And I consider this a, a real treasure. Now, if you'd like to hear it, this has a cylinder in it. It plays eight selections. And it plays off of one cylinder, and it has what they call a zither attachment to it. That's on the inside here. You can't see it, but it's right in here. And I'll show you and give you a little demonstration of what it sounds like. I'll have to wind it up. It makes a little noise because it has a ratchet wind on it. This is the zither attachment. You'll notice the difference. Sort of mutes it. However, I prefer to have it in the natural tone. I'd now like to show you the inside of the box here, how it works. This is the cylinder that I was telling you about. You notice it has all of these little uh, thongs sticking up there. This has the comb underneath which makes the music. And the music is made merely by the shifting of this, of this cylinder back and forth. Produces the, the tunes. So I'm going to play another tune for you here now so you can hear it again. And I'll explain a little more. Over here, it shows you what selection is being played. This is the, this is the line up here of the, of the different selections that are being played. Right now we're on number three. And uh, you'll notice how clear this is. Even though it's 111 years old, it's still sounds as good as the day that it was made. And as I have told you before, it was made in St. Croix in about the year 1814, somewhere along in that area. And uh, there were not very many of these made here of the cylinder type. The cylinder type only lasted a short time and then after that they came out with the disc type. And the advantage of the disc type over this particular cylinder type was that you could change and make different records, sort of like a modern jukebox is now. And that could have very well been the, the beginning of the ju modern jukebox, because it sort of put these out of, out of uh, existence. And there were only a few of them made. And that's another reason why I I believe that this is so very valuable. There are not a great many of them around. And uh, I'd like to show you the box here. If you'll notice the front of it here, that's all inlaid wood there. Uh, I believe it's fruit wood, but I'm not sure. And on the top here, it has a beautiful floral design. And uh, this is a sort of a geometric design here in, in front. The, uh, it was invented by Anton Favre, F-A-V-R-E, of Genoa, who first got the idea from uh, a musical movement that didn't use the traditional hammer and bell arrangement. The notes were provided by, as I say, the little steel blades on the inside. And uh, the remarkable thing about it is, I believe, that you can crowd eight 
beautiful pieces of music in one little cylinder like this. Whoever invented something like this had to have something going for him. Alan, that one piece that you played is really beautiful. Is it possible that you could run through all of the eight, not necessarily in order, so we can appreciate the beautiful music that was put on these cylinders uh, through just a bunch of pins? I'd be glad to do that. We'll start out here with number four. I wished I could pronounce some of these French and Italian names on here, but I'm not very good at it, so I'm just going to let the music box talk for itself. purposely let this shut off for the next tune so that I can wind it and the, and the, uh, the noise that the ratchet makes won't interfere with the music that you'd like to hear. So we'll go to the next tune now. Once again, we'll wind it. Let's try a little zither attachment for a moment. We'll take it off. Next selection. I would imagine that a lot of this music that you're hearing would be very familiar to you, to those of you who are music lovers and know the good music that's on this cylinder. However, I'm not well enough acquainted with it to, to let you know what it is. Shifting back to the first tune. This music box also has a little attachment right here. It will let you repeat a particular song if you wanted to hear it twice, the same piece. Or you can have it so it'll change each and every time. Alan, 
one, I wondered if you could do something else too. In talking with you, uh, there was a, certainly a lot of love in your family, and uh, this being a gift, a gift you know, over a hundred years ago, I wonder if you could tell us and, and show us a little bit about your family. I understand you've got a, a, uh, a photo that you've taken many, many, many years ago that you could talk to us about a little bit. I sure have, Jim, and uh, I'd be very happy to show it to you. It's a photo of the Thatcher family, which includes Moses and Letty Thatcher, who were the first owners of this music box. I told you that I, I have here a picture of the Thatcher family, which involves the... This is Moses Thatcher, and this is Letty Thatcher right here. He is the one that gave her the music box back in... 1877. It was first thought that uh, he, it was might have been an anniversary present or some such a thing. However, in checking out, I find that Preston Thatcher, who was the youngest of the boys over here, was born on September the 24th, 1877. So it's quite possible that this might have been a gift in honor of his birth. However, I'm not sure of that fact. Uh, starting here at the top, the oldest boy, Moses Thatcher, named after his father. This is Preston Thatcher. This is Lee Thatcher. And this is George F. Thatcher. George F. died about 1920 or 21. I remember going to his funeral when I was a very, very small boy. Right here is my maternal grandmother, Emma Thatcher Jepson, right here. This is her sister. This is her stepsister, Mrs. Christensen, or as I can recall, she was an adopted daughter of the Thatcher family. This is my grandmother's sister and my great aunt. Her name was Vita, and this is the one they call Aunt Ida. I did not know her. Our, our didn't know much about her because she had died before I was born, so I really knew very little about her. The uh, Thatcher family lived in Logan, Utah, on the very main part of town. They had a very beautiful home there. I can remember the grounds were very extensive, and there was a lot of, a lot of activity around that home. I remember making many and many a visits to it, uh, particularly when George F. died. I recall him lying in state there, and I went to the funeral, saw him. And that's when I first became acquainted with this music box, and when it became so, I became so very attached to it. At that time, Grandma Thatcher had willed that music box to my mother, told her that when she died, that the music box was to be hers, and that I was to get the music box when she, upon her death. And that's the way it's worked out over these years, and that's why I'm so concerned about it, and I hope that whoever inherits it after I leave takes as good a care of it as I have. Now, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Thatcher family. The Thatcher family was first known in Logan there by the Hezekiah Thatcher. He was the main Thatcher that came across the plains with Brigham Young. And uh, they founded, practically founded the town of, of Logan. They were a pioneer family crossed the plains with Brigham Young, who was the first president of the Mormon Church. They were well, they were a prosperous family, and uh, they were had many enterprises such as the banking, milling, merchandising, railroading. They were in just about everything that you could think of there. I recall they had a big flour mill there, and uh, Lee, Thatcher was the one that used to run the flour mill. I don't recall what Mose did or some of the others, but I do recall the flour mill and Lee was the one that ran that. 
Aunt Vita Thatcher married a man by the name of Squires and they moved to New York and he was a dentist there and practiced dentistry there for many, many years before his death. They had a son who was the same age as I am. He met with a very bad accident and as a result there was no one in that family left. My grandmother Thatcher was a very wonderful person. She not only was a very handsome woman, but I recall that she used to wear a perfume, I think it was apple blossom, and she used to smell as good as she looked. I always thought she did anyway. And I later found out that she was not only very good looking, and, and, but a very brilliant woman. And I, it was a privilege for me to know her. Uh, I always regretted the fact that I didn't ask more questions of my mother and my grandmother when they were alive as to more information about this music box particularly my great-grandmother. And so since I neglected to do that, I've had to sort of look and try to find out for myself. I found out that it was made in St. Croix, Switzerland, by Miramod Fer Ferraris in about 1860, although the cylinder type box was first made in 1840. It was not until 1860 that the lever wind was invented rather than the key wind. The wood is believed to be rosewood or fruit wood, has inlay work of both the front and the top of the box, and there's the floral design on the top. Seems to be a jet geometric design. It was Antone Favre of Genoa who got the idea for a musical movement that didn't use the tradition hammer and bell arrangement, and the notes were provided by the steel blades. And now I'd like to play for you one more tune on this very famous old music box. I'll let you enjoy it as I have enjoyed it all of these years. You've all enjoyed this as much as I have bringing it to you. <laughs> 